Hello, I'm Norbert Gleich, MD, the Medical Director and Chief Scientist at the Center for Human Reproduction. The question we almost daily receive is, why does CHR use DHEA, dehydroepiandrosterone? This is an interesting story, because it is a story that started with one patient. A somewhat older woman came to us, it is now almost 20 years ago, and wanted to freeze her eggs. Even though uh, I strongly advised her against it because of her age, she was insistent on doing it. In the first cycle, all we got was one egg, fortunately it fertilized, we had one embryo that we could freeze. I thought that was going to be it, because that was the initial agreement, but the patient then almost literally on her knees requested a second chance and one more cycle. And so we did another cycle. And this time we retrieved three eggs and three beautiful embryos could be frozen. At this point, uh, we could no longer resist her request for more cycles. And to cut the long story short, after six or seven cycles, when every cycle she produced more eggs and more embryos on a straight line, one day she comes smiling into my office and says, Dr. Gleich, I have to tell you a little secret. We, by that time, obviously had been scratching our heads what was going on with this woman who, in the meanwhile, was 42 years old and was producing more and more eggs and embryos. And what she told me as her big secret was that after I had refused her future treatments after the first IVF cycle where she had produced only one egg, she went to the literature, the medical literature. She was no doctor, she was a lawyer and a banker. And she went through the literature and she found a few papers that suggested remedies, how you could improve your egg and embryo numbers. And the remedy she chose was DHEA, reported in a little paper on a few women by colleagues uh, out of Texas. And she chose the remedy, as she smilingly explained to me, because in the U.S. DHEA is considered a supplement. In most of the rest of the world, DHEA is actually a controlled substance and requires prescriptions. But in the U.S. she could purchase DHEA without letting me know. And that was her motivation. Now, after we saw the effects of DHEA on this one patient, we started extensive studies in order to better understand what DHEA really can or cannot do. We have published close to 30 papers on the subject over the years. But what was probably even more important was that while we were studying DHEA in humans, at the same time, uh, some basic science colleagues at other universities had started studying the effects of androgen hormones, and DHEA is a natural androgen hormone from which our bodies make testosterone. Those basic scientists has, had started studying the effects of testosterone and DHEA on the ovaries. And so suddenly there were in two parallel tracts studies going on which both came to the same conclusion and that conclusion was that ovaries paradoxically need good androgen, good male hormone levels and DHEA became the tool with which we raised low androgen levels in women who were diagnosed with low androgen levels and therefore would benefit from uh, better androgen, better testosterone levels. So as a consequence, uh, DHA is today used all over the world and we are still grateful uh, to this patient who gave us this insight. Had she not started taking uh, DHA, uh, we would never have considered pursuing uh, this research track. CHR got quite a number of patents uh, also based on these DHA effects 
and we were very delighted to uh, make this patient a partner uh, in holding uh, those patent rights. That's why we are using DHA and this is why a big part of the world today is using DHA when trying to raise abnormally low androgen levels in infertile women. Thank you for listening.